Hi, fourth grade. We're back this week to finish up our lessons on narrative poetry. This is lesson number three. So if you have missed lesson one or two, I suggest that you go back and do those lessons prior to doing this lesson today. Okay, we have talked for two weeks now about narrative poetry and its components. I want you to take about five seconds and think if you can think of the three components of narrative poetry on your own. All right, what ideas did you come up with? We've been learning that narrative poetry tells a story. Narrative poems always tell a story, whether it's fiction or nonfiction. We've talked about how narrative poems have the story elements just like a regular story has. So we have characters, setting, problem solution. There's always a beginning, a middle, and an end just like there would be in a regular story. And what sets it apart from a regular story to a poem is the fact that it has literary elements. So literary elements are things like rhyme, rhythm, and stanzas. We're gonna take a look at it in a different type of poem today than we did last week. The first read through, our job is to analyze the poem to figure out if it tells a story. I want you to focus on these two questions right here. Does it tell a story? Is it fiction or nonfiction? The poem we're going to read is called First Men on the Moon by Patrick Lewis. First Men on the Moon by Patrick Lewis. That afternoon in mid-July, two pilgrims watched from distant space. The moon ballooning in the sky, they rose to meet it face to face. Their spidery spaceship eagle dropped down gently on the lunar sand. And when the module's engine stopped, cold silence fell across the land. The first man down the ladder, Neil, spoke words that we remember now. Small step for man, it made us feel as if we too were there somehow. Then Neil planted the flag and Buzz collected lunar rocks and dust. They hopped like kangaroos because of gravity or wanderlust. A quarter million miles away, one small blue planet watched in awe, and no one who was there that day will soon forget the moon they saw. So our questions to think about, does it tell a story? Is it fiction or nonfiction? I know that was a lot of information in this poem, but only focus on these two questions. So does it tell a story? Yes, the poem indeed tells the story, and it tells the story of the first trip to moon. If we look up here with our text evidence, it happened on an afternoon in mid-July. They saw the moon, and it says they rose to meet it face to face. Well, it means they would have rose in their spaceship in that the moon became in their line of vision. They saw it. And our second question, is it fiction or nonfiction? Well, let's take a look at our text evidence. This poem is nonfiction, meaning it's factual. The trip to the moon is an important historical milestone for our country. They talked about the spaceship Eagle. We could look that up on Google or someplace else on the internet to prove that that's what happened. Neil was the first astronaut who stepped off the spaceship and he made the famous quote, small step for man. We can definitely prove that if we did our research. Neil planted the flag on the moon while Buzz collected lunar rocks and dust off of the moon. And this all happened while we watched from planet Earth. It says one small blue planet watched in awe. Well, the blue planet is us on Earth, and people were able to watch that on television. So it's a poem that tells a story. It is a nonfiction story. It's, those are two characteristics this poem has to be a narrative poem. Let's move on. The second component we've talked about are story elements. These are the characters, the setting, and the plot. Does it have a beginning, a middle, and an end?
So we're going to read the poem again. And I know you might be asking, Mrs. Snyder, why do we have to read the poem a second time? Because each time we read it, kids, we are focusing on a different question. If we focused on all the questions at the same time, it gets a little overwhelming and sometimes our brains get a little bit jumbled. So this is a good strategy to slow your brain down and to answer the questions clearly. First Man on the Moon by Patrick Lewis. This time, you are listening to see if it has any of the following story elements. That afternoon in mid-July, two pilgrims watched from distant space. The moon ballooning in the sky, they rose to meet it face to face. Their spidery spaceship eagle dropped down gently on the lunar sand. And when the module's engine stopped, cold silence fell across the land. The first man down the ladder, Neil, spoke words that we remember now. Small step for man. It made us feel as if we too were there somehow. Then Neil planted the flag and Buzz collected lunar rocks and dust. They hopped like kangaroos because of gravity or wanderlust. A quarter million miles away, one small blue planet watched in awe, and no one who was there that day will soon forget the moon they saw. Take a couple of seconds and think for yourself before we look at text evidence. Are there characters? Is there a setting? And does the poem contain a beginning, a middle, and an end to create a full story? So the answer is yes to all of those. So let's look here. We have our characters as Neil and Buzz. They show up here in our text. They are our characters. They are the astronauts who participated in the story. The setting is the space and moon. Because of the text evidence here, distant space and the moon in the sky and them landing on the moon, that's how we know it's the setting. The beginning of the text tells us that two astronauts flew to space in the spaceship Eagle and their mission was to land on the moon. They rose to meet it face to face, which was the moon. And right here is where they put their spaceship Eagle gently down on the lunar sand. Lunar means moon. So if it landed on the lunar sand, it landed on the moon sand. We go on to the middle of the story. This is when Neil and Buzz stepped off the spaceship. It tells about things that they did. It talks about how Neil planted the flag and Buzz collected lunar rocks. And then it just looks like they explored. They hopped around and enjoyed the lack of gravity. And the story ends as Americans from Earth watched Neil and Buzz make history. So this poem tells a story, it's nonfiction, and it has all of the story elements. It's definitely looking like a narrative poem. We have one more component to look for. These are the literary elements. When we look for literary elements, these are the things that set the poem aside as being a narrative poem and not just a narrative story. So we're looking at rhyme, rhythm, and stanzas. Those are the three literary, literary elements we have been working on. So as we read this time, please focus on just the literary elements. That afternoon in mid-July, two pilgrims watched from distant space, the moon ballooning in the sky, they rose to meet it face to face. Their spidery spaceship eagle dropped down gently on the lunar sand. And when the module's engine stopped, cold silence fell across the land. The first man down the ladder, Neil, spoke words that we remember now. Small step for man, it made us feel as if we too were there somehow. Then Neil planted the flag and Buzz collected lunar rocks and dust. They hopped like kangaroos because of gravity or wanderlust. A quarter million miles away, one small blue planet watched in awe, and no one who was there that day will soon forget the moon they saw. Take a few seconds to think on your own. Is there rhyme? Is there a rhythm that you heard when I was reading to you? And was the poem written in stanzas? All right, let's see. 
So let's talk about rhyme first. If we look at our text evidence, every other line rhymes. Each stanza has two new pairs of rhyming words. So I have it color coded for you. Here we see July sky, space face, dropped stopped, sand land, Neil feel, now somehow. And you can go down that list on your own. When an author of a poem uses this much rhyme, it definitely leads to a very consistent rhythm. It has a steady beat to it. It's easy to stay in a flow when you're reading. So this poem has rhyme, it has rhythm, and I mentioned it up here if you, if you caught me. It also has stanzas. Remember, stanzas are used instead of paragraphs, and there are five stanzas in this poem. This is stanza one, stanza two, stanza three, stanza four, and stanza five. Now I have a challenge question for you. Do any of you know what these numbers 1, 5, 10, 15, and 20 stand for? Because those are not the stanza numbers. These over here show our stanzas. Any ideas? If you said it, it numbers the lines of the poem, it gives the line number, then you are correct. So this right here is line number one. If we count one, two, three, four, five, that's line number five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, line number ten, and so on until we get to line number 20 at the bottom. You might be wondering, well, why would a poet or the publisher of the poem put the line numbers? Because when we're talking about text evidence, it's nice to be able to refer to the line number. So I could say in stanza three, line 10, and that gets our eyes right here. If I say stanza four, line 14, well, that gets us right here. It really helps our eyes get quickly to where somebody else is talking about. So it's a nice feature when those line numbers are included. All right, let's review. Can you remember the three components we look for in narrative poetry? Think. Shout them out. You should have it tells a story, whether it's fiction or nonfiction. There are story elements, just like a regular story. Character, setting, problem, solution, beginning, middle, end. And what sets it apart as poetry and not a story? The literary elements such as rhyme, rhythm, and stanzas. Nice job. When I checked your poems, um, your poem answers from last week, I saw some good work. I think we're getting a good handle on the components of narrative poetry and applying it to poems. This is our last practice for narrative poetry. So after you watch this video, please open the Google Doc activity in this week's lesson. And please don't forget to turn in your work when you are finished. I will check it and I will get it back to you. Have a wonderful week, and I will see you next week with a new skill. So stay tuned. Bye-bye.